Hi, I'm Brian Freer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is covalent bonding. You all might remember ionic bonding. That was one way to fill the octet rule, basically to get the same electron configuration as a noble gas. The other way is covalent bonding. You see, with covalent bonding, it can only occur between nonmetals, even though ionic bonding can occur between metals and nonmetals. The other difference is that with ionic bonding, electrons are either gained or lost. Covalent bonding has a sharing of electrons instead. Okay, so let's start with some covalent bonds. But first I want to show you Lewis dot notation. Lewis dot notation is an easy way of figuring out co how covalent bonds work. It shows you only the valence electrons, the ones we want to work with when getting to a noble gas electron configuration. So let me show you some of those. Let's start out with carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six. And here's its electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. When you want to figure out the number of valence electrons, work only with the highest energy level. That's this big number over here to, to the left. In this case, it's uh, 2. That's the biggest one. So just ignore everything else. Now we need only to work with the electron numbers. Those are these small ones up here. You just need to add them together. 2 plus 2, 4. So 4 valence electrons. 1. 2, 3, 4. And that's how it looks like in Lewis dot notation. Let's do another one. How about fluorine? Atomic number 9. Electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 5. So again, highest energy level, 2. So get rid of everything else. Now focus on the electron numbers, 2 and 5. 2 plus 5, 7. 7 valence electrons. Now, notice that I'm actually going around fluorine in a circle. Well, there's a reason for that. See, while electrons can travel in pairs, and I have put them in pairs, they tend to prefer not to. You can consider a loose dot notation to have four slots around the chemical symbol. Fill everyone with a single electron before going on into the doubles, and just go around in a circle. Okay. So having that, let's proceed on to bonding. When it comes to Lewis dot notation, you just need to have eight electrons around your chemical. This one is four, so it needs four more. This one has seven, it only needs one more. So let's bond some stuff together. I'll move it over here. Let's get some sharing in there. I'm going to draw in another fluorine. And there is its lone electron, and it's being shared with carbon, kind of like this. So now this fluorine has eight electrons in its valence shell. It has the electron configuration of a noble gas. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five. It needs three more. So we'll just bring in three more fluorines. And here are the Lewis dot notations. As you can see, what will eventually happen is every atom will have eight electrons around it. Every fluorine has eight electrons, and carbon has eight electrons. But this is a very messy way to write it. What we generally do to represent these bonds is a line. So if we were writing out the chemical structure, we'd write it like this. The compound, using chemical symbols, would be CF4. That 4 is the number of fluorides. Now, you call that carbon tetrafluoride. But, let's, but you, we need to talk about that later. Instead, let's just do another covalent bond. We'll work with oxygen. Oxygen has an atomic number of 8. 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Highest energy level is 2, so don't worry about the 1. 2 plus 4 is 6, so 6 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so it needs only 2 to become like a noble gas. Well, let's bring in an old friend. Hydrogen. Hydrogen has only one electron. This is going to be hard. Ta-da! Lewis dot notation of hydrogen. Now, unlike most other elements, hydrogen needs two valence electrons to become like a noble gas. So this is going to be easy. Let's bond it to water. That hydrogen's done. And one more here. That one's done. Oxygen has eight electrons around it. Each hydrogen has two. It's filled out. That would look kind of like this. H2O. 
water. So that's how it's done. To recap, the alternative to ionic bonding is covalent bonding. That's between nonmetals. Instead of a loss or gain of electrons, electrons are shared. An easy way to show this is the list dot notation. That works with only the valence electrons. Yes, teachers will need you to use this. So be prepared. What you do is make sure that in after the bonding, every atom has eight electrons around it, like over here in carbon tetrafluoride. Or up there in water. Okay. That's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.